My name's Dr. David Ellis and I'm a lecturer at Stroke Early Care Researcher in Psychology at the University of Lincoln. My research is all about um, understanding how people interact with each other socially and I'm particularly interested in not only how people interact face to face but also how that relationship is mediated between going from online communication to offline communication. What we're going to do today is, is kind of replicating a previous study where we get groups of people to try and work together to achieve a common goal and in this case the goal is to build the tallest tower they can out of some basic materials. So in this case it's spaghetti, um, a yard of sellotape, a yard of string, a pair of scissors and the trick is they have to put a marshmallow on the top so it has to be strong enough to, to hold the weight of the marshmallow which is surprisingly heavy. Um, and in previous experiments what we've done is we've tried to disrupt this group. So there's lots of research on what makes a successful group um, but sometimes it's often assumed that to make a group fail you just reverse engineer that but it's not always as straightforward as that. This group today is just going to get a chance to do the task without us intervening in any way. Um, so it's other ways we've intervened might include putting an actor in the group or it might involve giving them misinformation about the task. While they're doing this task they're going to be each member of the group is going to wear what's called a sociometric sensor and these are small sensors that you wear around your neck and they contain a microphone, um, an infrared sensor, a proximity sensor uh, so you can start to look at how not only the individual is behaving but also how they're behaving within that group. So for example you can measure who's talking to who for how long they're talking to that person. You can do what's called social network analysis on that to see is there a clear leader within that group, is someone talking over someone all the time. So you can sort of look at uh, how how people have been influenced by others in the group as well. So you can visualise that data in lots of different ways. I mean, if you're, if you're just looking at an individual, then you can obviously just look at really basic things like when did they talk, as well as what they talked about across you know, a given time period. These sensors also have accelerometers in them, which measure someone's posture. So generally, if social interactions are going well, people tend to mimic each other's behaviour in very subtle ways. And so if one person leans forward and the group is working very cohesively, you'll find that other people will start to mimic that behaviour. In previous research, the, the big aim was to tr is to try and understand what actually makes a team fail. So you might say, well, what's, why would you want to, to know that? Well, there's lots of people who, people in social situations often have the propensity to have a good or bad aim. Um, so that's certainly the overarching aim of previous work. I guess moving forward, I'm equally as interested in how groups and relationships form and develop as we jump between these kind of face-to-face -face contexts that we're looking at today and also as they kind of jump from online scenarios to face-to-face. To -face.